Logan Square in Bucktown was a rough area in the late 50s and early 60s. Many whites blamed the Puerto Rican immigration into this area. This is when a lot of the white greaser gangs went into an all-out attack looking for Puerto Rican kids and just beating them up. This is how a lot of the oldest Puerto Rican gangs formed in this area. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy's second Hey guys, what's up? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Subanse la suburban. We're taking another ride to the north side. <laughs> Back by popular demand. Hey, we got another episode today of Gang Life. You know, uh, I've been talking a little bit about the north side in these uh, past episodes, but we'll get back to the south side. Remember guys, there is hundreds and hundreds of gangs that I need to cover and the research and just, it takes homework. You know, it takes homework, it takes work, and it takes making phone calls. So not all of it's gonna be at 100%, not all of it's gonna be, you know, clean, tight, whatever you wanna call it. It takes a lot of work and I got a lot of them to go through. So please stop getting on my ass about it. If you're gonna do this one, you're gonna do that one. Trust me, I have a list on my wall that is fucking long with every single ones that are active, inactive, and ones that are completely have disappeared that people don't even know about. Yeah, but you know, today, we're gonna talk about a gang that is was heard about back in the day, but then kind of lost a little bit of steam. But like I've always tell people, I give the research and the study and I, I make calls and everything because it's not that I'm glorifying the whole gang stuff. I'm not glorifying. I give every organization its credit for its upbringing and, and, and just the history, their, their test in time. That's all I do and it's just not letting our Chicago history go down the drain. It is what it is, whether it's gangs or, or, or not. There's a lot of history in Chicago and a lot of it has to do with organized crime, gangs, graffiti, uh, I mean, you name it. It's just, it is what it is, it's culture. We never thought that yuppies and hippies would come back, right? Well. Guess what? They are. All right, let's get into this shit, man. Even though this gang is an Hispanic gang, it was founded by a white kid. We are talking about the insane unknowns. It is, it is said that most of the first unknown members were actually Latin King Pee Wees that for some reason were kicked out of a Latin King branch and for some reason they were they were just you know to, they told they told them to to drop their flag it is said that for some time they called themselves the undercover kings and I heard about this way back when I was like a kid you know because stories are told about gangs in Chicago all the time I don't know how true it is but of all the stuff that I looked up and people that I talked about, the undercover kings did exist and they were in that area that I'm talking about. But that name wouldn't last long. When they met TJ, that is the white kid and the founder of the Insane Unknowns, the unknowns were born. <laughs> in 1975, the Cobras got word that the unknowns were using the insane on their name. 
gangs in Chicago take that very, very serious when it's just, I'll give you an example. It's just like the motorcycle gangs that use, you know, the top, top flyer or what is it called? You know, when they have their logo and then they, they, they represent like a city or a state. I forgot what those are called. I'll look it up. But same thing, same kind of thing, same. So the Cobras approached the unknowns and told them to drop. The insane. Well, the unknowns told them we're we're not going to drop it, and if we need to go to war, we're going to war. This has been one of the most bloodiest wars the North Side has seen. You know, even in the, to the 70s, 80s. I mean, they were going back and forth. I mean, the unknowns were killing cobras. The cobras were killing unknowns, and it was like it was crazy. They were going at it. In 1978, the unknowns became well known for being leader killers of their rivals. I'll tell you something. When a a high-ranking member from any organization, whether it's the unknowns, the kings, the cobras. As these two six Rasa Saints, it doesn't matter when a leader, a high-ranking member, is killed. All out war goes back and forth, back and forth. Retaliation is a must right away. And the unknowns actually were known for taking those steps. You know, they actually did kill some of the leaders of the folks and part of organizations on the north side. In 1992, a war broke out with the Land Kings all over uh, drug turf. And this is what I mean. Once you start expanding, that's where war is unedible. It's gonna happen because you start expanding to other people's corners. Those people don't like it. And I've seen where other organizations are cool, you know, with each other and they invite each other to their corners, their blocks, but then it's almost like a guest that doesn't go away. They're always over there. They're always hanging out. They start doing business over there. And at the end of the day, they end up taking over that block. And that's when the war starts. In all test of time, test of the north side, northwest, the insane unknowns were known for never backing down from any war and using extreme violence to keep their enemies out of their hood. At the end, the only gang they would not be able to push out would be the yuppies and the hipsters buying out the area. After the late 90s, these neighborhoods would go back to selling for top dollar. Change is a force that cannot be stopped, no matter how tough of a gang it is. Money talks. Chicago neighborhoods have always been changing in Chicago from Polish to Irish to Mexican to Puerto Rican black back to white and it's just it's a big melting pot Chicago is a huge hub for a lot of people it's a beautiful city it's a beautiful city that I love to the fullest I was born and raised there I will always be a Chicago boy and that's just how it is is it a violent city? Yes, it's a very, very violent city and it's been like that since day one, since Al Capone, since even before Al Capone. There's always been organized crime, there's always been gangs, and now there's a heavy cartel presence there because it is what it is. It is a big hub, a big city with a lot of trains, planes, buses, cars, you name it. This is where it all comes down to and I tell everybody all the time. Yeah, you know, you were 13, 12 years old. It was fun running the streets, you know, having shootouts, going to parties, having girlfriends, looking cool, being cool, of, being part of like the cool kid scene. But times have changed. You, you would have never thought that this hipster and hippie stuff would come back and it's not cool no more to be a gangster. It's not cool no more to it's not cool, it's just not cool no more to be that way. And things are changing, laws are changing. And a lot of these kids that are still trapped in that, in that environment and in that mindset are catching 20, 30, 40 years for what? For nothing. If you are over 20 years old and you're still hanging out on the block, something is definitely fucking wrong with you. It's time for a change, guys. 
I don't put nobody down. I don't think I'm better than no one. I just want you to see what took me 40 years to see and the big reality check that I had when I got out of prison and I was an old man because I'm not 12 years old no more. I'm not 16. There's more to life than gang banging, than shooting, than trying to be cool, making money. Trust me, you will make more money out here than trying to make 40 grand and then spending 10 years in prison. I'm only gonna do this over and over again until you actually, you actually hear it and I get through to you because it's just like my grandfather used to say, it goes in one ear and it comes out the other. <laughs> my name's JC, I am Wrong Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage and remember, you only have one life to live. You might as well live it free out here with your family creating a life, educating yourself, and every day living it to the fullest. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.